home from El Centro, we, uh, we sort of stumbled across you know, what looked like a big fair. And uh, when we, uh, we got home that night, we saw on the news, we read you know, that it was uh, the, the uh, Leon Feria. Mm -hmm. And um, it, that it just opened. And that uh, the, the normal entrance fee of 11 pesos, about 60 cents, was being waived uh, in, by the state in order to entice people to get to the fair uh, in, in the gas crisis. Mm -hmm. Then what do you know about the fair? Well, you know, when we passed the fair, it it's sort of reminded me of the Vermont State Fair. Yeah, which, which we've been to numerous times. Yep. So in the, uh, you know, the But Vermont it was also next to this big theater, too, so it seemed like it was even more than the Vermont State Fair. And not just the theater, but it was right next to the, uh, the convention center, too. Yep. You know, and uh, so we said, hi, let's go. Let's, let's see what it is. Yep. You know, so, uh, so, so the, next day, the next day we went and, uh, you know, and doing sort of a little, little research before we went, we found that the, uh, the fair here was actually the fourth largest in Mexico. And they've, they've been happening since 1876. 1876, and, and uh, it has like six million visitors every year, so. And it runs almost the entire month of yeah. January. And I mean, who goes to Leon, Mexico in January? I mean, we never even heard of Leon. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that fair is a happening place. Oh. A happening place. You know, so, uh, so the next, next, morning, next morning we went there, um, you know, right about the time it opened, so there weren't a lot of people, wasn't crowded yet. Yep. Uh, and it was it was just it was just getting warm, and uh, we went you know went and got our tickets, our free tickets, and you know entered the place. And you know when upon entry, it, it seemed to me just like any other sort of state fair we've been to, with lots and lots of, of food vendors yep. and and food stalls and. Well, but I mean, but so different too because the food was so different, and I didn't even recognize what a lot of it. A lot of it was. And we'd only been in, we'd only been in Mexico for a couple of days, so it was it was totally unexpected. Every different vendor, every vendor was unique and different, and and you know sort of exciting to us. And it was very difficult trying to make a decision as to uh, as, as to what we were going to what we we're going to eat. Plus, Leon is not a big North American tourist kind of place. So every sign was in Spanish, which we haven't really started studying yet. I mean, we speak it a little, but you know, everything was in Spanish. So trying to figure out what all the food was, was really difficult. And then we saw a restaurant that wasn't as loud as the other ones. It, the music was not blasting as much. But to me, one of the big reasons we picked that restaurant was because they had pictures. I mean, they actually yeah, had exactly. plates <laughs> all along the window. They had plates and they showed you which one it was. So you can look and see what the heck a taquito was or a huarache or whatever it was that you were ordering. I, I, call, I call it Mexican half volume with the sound. Because yeah. there, there were several places that just we were just repulsed by. We couldn't go in because, because it was so loud. But this restaurant also had a whole bunch of pigs hanging in the front window. Yeah. <laughs> cooking cooking for, uh, for somebody's meal a little later on. Yeah. But the, uh, the, food, the food turned out to be just uh, excellent. Massive uh, quantities. Massive quantities. It was, really it, was, it was excellent. You know, so we got to see the woman you know, right there, right in the front, you know, making you know, the tortillas. Which became a continuing source of fascination <laughs> for Bob the entire time that we've been in Mexico, is watching them make tortillas. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, love, I love the machines, but uh, we'll do a video on that some other time. Yeah. I, just, I can hear them a block away. But uh, <laughs> he can't, so stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, I love those things. And, but uh, you know, even that was kind of overwhelming for Gavin. Yeah. Even just eating in that restaurant. Yep. I mean, it's just so colorful and uh, it's so, so many loud. people in Indians yeah. and so loud. Yeah. And uh, then, then they also have uh, in the convention center, it turns out that they have um, um, craft vendors displays and, and, and selling, you know, Crafts. Three floors of a massive convention center just covered with Mexican crafts and vendors. Yep, from, from all over Mexico. Uh, one floor was somewhat dedicated to the, the leather industry. Mm -hmm. you know, because so that's, belts and purses and wallets and, and jackets. And saddles and, and what I call cowboy hats. You know, so, uh, and cowboy boots. And, and yeah, definitely the cowboy boots are a big this thing. This place yeah. would have definitely fit in at Telluride or up at Steamboat. I, I could see. Yeah. People loving it too. Yeah, but uh, you know, it just, it just, it was just fascinating and it, 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 and overwhelming all at once. And again, fortunately, we're there before the big crowds got there because it would have just been jam packed. You wouldn't have been able to move in it that place really because anyway. it was, it was, they were pretty packed close together. 
but it's just uh, it's just some beautiful, beautiful things. And then it, then there was just Mexican crafts on another floor. I remember going in yep. and seeing little Mexican dolls and seeing those little. Uh, those little bowls that they make guacamole in and just all kinds of Mexican crafts. And they had a little Mexican petting zoo up on the third floor, oh. I remember. <laughs> I forgot about that. But they have that at the Western Stock Show, too. I mean, that's yeah. how they attract kids. Looks that's, like there was a stage in the back, too, yep. where they have music. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like sort of what you have in the U.S. Only with really cool Mexican flavor. Yeah, you got it in Mexico, too. Yeah. And, um, oh, and a lot of religious stuff. So they're... You know, you're looking at the crafts, but it's really Mexican crafts. So you might have just all Roman Catholic statues and booths. Yeah, or, or crosses, or yep. you know, some pla some places. You know, we've seen just uh, just baby Jesuses. Right. You know? <laughs> and tons of ceramics, all kinds of ceramics, all kinds of textiles, Mexican super color colorful textiles. And don't Here's... forget, with a little bit of tequila here and there, oh, yeah, everywhere. The, yeah, Mexican booths. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you could taste the mezcal as well, because yep. I think I bought mezcal or thought yep. about it yep. at one point. Yeah, I, I said, I put a little stop to that. I said, hey, we've only been in Mexico for a couple of days. We don't need to be buying you know, tequila from every, every single vendor. He was wrong about that when you think about it. Maybe. Maybe, maybe you should buy it from every <laughs> single vendor. <laughs> and then they also had these massive, massive tents. I mean, I mean, big, big, massive tents set up that sold nothing but kitchenwares. Yep. And uh, there were so many kitchenwares in there with big pots and pans and everything you could imagine for the kitchens. I mean, it was, it was, it was just incredible. Thinking that, are they really going to sell all that? And I'm thinking, probably yes. Yeah. Over the course of twenty six days. I mean, days. we were there one of the first days. Yeah. And there was still just massive, massive yeah. quantities of that. Yeah. And uh, then they also had the livestock. Which... Well, that's right. So at this point, when we saw the livestock tent, Gavin and I went somewhere quiet while Bob explored the livestock tent, and then I went back and explored it with him. Yeah. It was, it was basically an arena. It was more of a permanent structure there. And uh, it must have been the, the cattle and rabbit judging days. Yes. Because you know, what, was, what was there that day was, just like, was a lot of, with a lot of cows. And uh, you know a bunch of a bunch of rabbits. But again, if you ever been to a state fair, you know it's 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 the same whether you're in Mexico or whether whether you're in your home state. You know that does uh, that yeah. does farming and, and, and yep. ranching. Really, I mean, you have the cows. You have you have the name of the um, ranch, El Rancho, where the cow is is um, yeah. kept, and then you have. Of course, the names of the people who own it, and you had all these people with their cowboy hats taking care of their cows, only speaking Spanish instead of with a Western twang. Yep. And of course, the obligatory family photo of the kids sitting on top of a couple of beautiful show ponies. That's right. You know, which which the Mexicans which ride. Mexicans lined up for just like it was uh, taking their picture with Santa Claus. Yep. You know, it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was. Adorable. It, it was hilarious. Hilarious. It was. You know, the uh, the other thing there was there were because it's so big. It allowed for open air musicians to be in a variety of places. You know, this throughout. is not in the livestock tent now. No, we're outside of that. Yeah. We're, we're gone. <laughs> we, we walked out. We bypassed it. The key. There's a big courtyard in the middle. You know, where all the people mill around and go from place to place. Place to place. And yes, there were musicians yeah. out musicians there. everywhere. Yep. Yeah, everywhere, and including the uh, the Mayans, the Aztec people who uh, hang from ropes and swing around the big pole. Yeah. That, that, that we've seen in Cancun and we've seen in in uh, Puerto Vallarta, you know, and uh, you see these guys all the time. They just swing around upside down from, from the pole. It takes them about uh, 45 minutes to do their show. And they're they, being like birds. Yeah. They're being like a sort of bird, and they're, they're dressed in their Mayan outfits, and some of them stay at the top and play these flutes a little bit discordantly, <laughs> while the other ones sort of make their way down. I guess, they wrap themselves up, climbing up. They wrap all the way around this pole structure, and then they leap off and they start to fly in bigger and bigger concentric circles, hanging upside down, connected by the ankles, yep. until they get to the bottom where they land beautifully. And of course, one of their members is walking around with the proverbial uh, hat, collecting, uh, collecting yeah, tips, <laughs> <laughs> collecting donations for their, for their show. Exactly. So, <laughs> so it, it's, both, it's both a demonstration of ancient Mayan culture. And a job. Exactly. <laughs> and a money grab. <laughs> and a money grab. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, uh, and then, then we, um, 
then in one of the arenas there, they were they were given a uh, show, a performance <laughs> show. It was called a Brazos or a Hugs. It was a lot like Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, and uh, we we went in we went into that. And, uh, that was free I, it was, too, wasn't it, was, it? It was free too. I don't think it was free every day, but it was free on the Monday or Tuesday. You know that that we were there, and uh, I thought I thought it was I thought it was great. You know the great lighting, uh, the the, uh, the the performers were just absolutely stunning. Again, very Cirque du Soleilish. Yeah, a lot uh, of gymnastics, were, a lot of gymnastics, dance, music, you know, roller skates. These people were on props, really interesting props yeah. that they incorporated into everything they were doing. Uh, it was a, it was a it was a great it was a great show, mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit of gravity defiance, very interesting. And of course, Lisa loves the Ferris wheel. And there's a Ferris wheel there, so Lisa and I had to go on the Ferris wheel. And the Ferris wheel's the Ferris wheel's nice because you go up; it gives you sort of a bird's eye view yep. of not yep. just the, the fairgrounds, you know, but but also we got oh, the, the whole city of Wales. Yeah, which which was interesting to us since we had just gotten there, and uh, yep. so we had a uh, we had a nice little trip on on the on the Ferris wheel. Yeah, it wasn't too crowded when we went there. No, and uh, it was uh, it was nice. So, what did you think of the fair overall? Well, I mean, I thought it was so interesting that we went back a second day. We did. Mostly, mostly because we had to go back for the Ferris wheel. Well, not only that. Yes. Well, I wanted to go back for the Ferris wheel, but I was also really interested in all food trucks. Yeah. Because we the ate in vendors, that restaurant. Yeah. yeah, and we didn't. And, 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 and yeah. we had passed all these fascinating food vendors with stuff that I didn't recognize. Yeah. And, they all look so delicious. I didn't even know which one to eat. Yeah, we're gonna go back there for the ten days straight. Just and, to and eat. And had a different, a different, interesting meal. Yep. But you know, you have to survive the, the crowd rush at that point. And I can't even remember what I ordered there. I do remember that it's it was awesome. Yep. It was so good, whatever it was, and and that somebody spoke English there and explained to me what it was I was eating, and he had been living in New York for a while. And so, you know, he recognized me and started talking. He wanted to practice his English because it had been a while. And he told me all the different, all the different sauces they had and how you use them. And it was really great. So good. And you went off and bought something different, a burrito? No. No, I bought a uh, taco al pastor. Oh, the, uh, from the guys yeah, with the yeah, yeah. Like a little carving knife yeah. death and you know, it's my, my, one of my favorites. It's sort of this meat that's on a spit. If you've ever had a hero, or some people call it a gyro, um, Middle Eastern food, it's the same concept where they'll put the lamb on that spit and it'll go around and around in circles cooking and then they cut off slices of it and put it into a, a flour tortilla. No. Because tacos are in flour tortillas in Mexico, not the crunchy corn tortillas that we eat in the United States. And usually they have a bit of pineapple at the top of it, and the guy always slices off a little thin slice of pineapple that goes in your, your, your taco there, too. I didn't know. I yeah. didn't have one. Yeah, exactly. You have to be observant of that sort of thing. <laughs> so all in all, it was a great maybe two days. Yeah. It wasn't two full days because we, we left out of there for it got too crowded both, yeah. both days. But uh, it was a great time at the fair. We're really glad that we just sort of stumbled upon it. Yep. You know, one of I think one of the cultural events of the year, you know, in Leon. So if you go to go to Leon in, in January and early February, you know, make make sure you, you stop by you know, stop by that fair because it's a, a, a distinct well, not distinctly Mexican experience because but you know it's a certainly a a, it's a Leon experience, Leon experience, muy auténtico, very authentic Leon experience, La Feria, and it also has rides. Yeah, all kinds oh, yeah, of rides. Yeah. We didn't even go on the rides, yeah, but for the, it's for the got kids. the whole amusement park right. too. Yep. Yeah. So definitely take advantage of La Feria in Leon. All right. Thanks for watching. Hasta la vista. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to hear and see our next videos.